Hi, my name is Warren Toomey and I work at the Coomera campus at TAFE Queensland Gold Coast. And I like to use quizzes a lot with my students so that I can assess how they're going and also at the end of term uh, in terms of summative assessment. And Connect provides you with a way of importing questions that you've already written so that you can run online quizzes. The big problem with Connect though is that the, this format of importing is really, really ugly and no person in their right mind would actually want to write questions in that format. So to make it easier for myself and for other people, I've written a web-based tool and I'll just go to the website up over here. So have a look at that URL. If you use this URL, you can write your quiz questions in a much simpler text format and this conversion tool will convert it into the format that Connect requires to do the import. So let's just have a look at what type of questions uh, Connect supports. Okay, so we've got long answer questions where the student gets to write one or more sentences, you know, a paragraph, um, hopefully not a whole essay. Short answer questions where they get to fill in a word, a missing word, for example. We've got true or false questions where it's either true or false. Multiple choice questions where there's only one choice, all the other ones are wrong. Multiple select where there are some right choices and they've got to get all the right choices to score the full question mark. You also have matching questions. So you have a list of things and a list of things that have to be matched and the student has to put them together. And finally, there's an ordering question. So put these things into the right order. So let's have a look at how you can write simple text-based versions of these questions which can be imported into Connect. If I just scroll down on my website, there are some examples. Okay, now to begin with, you might want to leave comments in your quiz files. So start them with hashes at the beginning of the line. So here's a long answer question. LA. The thing that comes after the LA colon is a title which is used for the teacher to remind them of what the question was about. The student will never see this. What the student will see are the lines of text that come straight after and that forms the question. The question ends when there's a line with a plus sign at the beginning of the line. So for a long answer question, you just provide the question and Connect will fill in, will provide you, the student with a place to put in the answer. Blank lines are used to separate questions. A short answer question, again, we've got our title up the front. Here's the question, fill in the missing words, and just use lots of underscores to indicate where the student has to fill in the missing word. Now with the lines that begin with the plus, these are the words that are possible answers to the question. So uh, Kim could have been feeding her goat, her horse, or her rabbit. And if the student answers one of these three answers, then they'll get full marks. One of the nice things you can do with Connect is to provide students with feedback once they've completed the assessment. So they'll see this feedback line, but only when they've completed the quiz and they go to look at their results. Next type of question, true or false? Again, we've got a title to remind the teacher. We've got the question. This time, plus means that this is the correct answer. False is the correct answer. And anything starting with a minus sign is not correct. And so that's going to be the pattern from now on. If it starts with a plus, that's the right answer. If it's a minus sign, that's not the right answer. Multiple choice where there's only one right answer. Title, the question, Canberra is the right answer and all the other options are not correct. So when we go to multiple select, it's logical that we start with the title, we start with the question, and this time we've got multiple answers that can be correct. There are three state capitals, Sydney, Brisbane and Melbourne, and three answers which are not state capitals. This time we've used an option which comes after the answers and this time we've got a hint which Connect allows you. So you can give a student a hint while they're answering the question, but before they get their feedback. So they'll see this when they're actually answering the question in the quiz. Two more, I think. Yes, there are two more. One is a matching type question. And this one's going to be a food match. And I'll talk about this HTML at the end. So here's the question, match the food or drink. And here are the answers that the student can choose to match. Ice cream, 
we use the equal greater than sign as an arrow to say that that must match up with the answer very cold. White wine matches up with cool. Red wine matches up with room temperature. Pizza is hot. Coffee is boiling hot. So when the student adds to these, these will be in random order and the student's got to match the uh, options on the right with the options on the left. And the last type is the ordering question. So we've got to put these categories into order from youngest to oldest. Now, as the teacher, we provide the answers in the right order. Connect will randomize the ordering, and so the students have to reorder them to get them into the right order. Again, plus sign indicates legitimate answers all the way from baby, baby toddler, child, all the way up to senior citizen. Now, I did say I was going to talk about HTML. Because this is plain text and Connect by default only lets you import plain text, there's no way that you can decorate your questions and your answers with things like bold or italics or underline or maybe you want to put a table in. So if you do know how to do HTML, then you can use HTML markup, but only when the title is decorated with the word HTML. All right, so let's see this in action. Let's actually grab these questions because there's one of every different type in here. And I'm going to cut and paste them into a notepad file, a plain text file. Now, yes, you probably could use Word or WordPad, um, but notepad is, uh, because it is a text file, it makes much more sense to use notepad. Oh, and just let's try out HTML. So let's just put in match the and make the word food into bold. I shouldn't actually do this because I've not tried it, but let's find out what happens. All right, so let's save this file. Let's save it on our desktop. And let's call it myquestions.txt. Now remember, this is something that you can keep, you can edit, but it's not the format that Connect actually needs. So let's get rid of Notepad and go back to this conversion tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to browse to the text file we've just created. And of course, you could keep this and bring it back out again as you need it. I'm going to browse onto my desktop and grab my questions, the text file. And I'm going to submit it for conversion. And straight away, we get back a CSV, a comma-separated version of the file. We're going to save that. Now, just to show you how ugly this thing is, and I, I'm sorry for the Connect people out there, but it really is ugly. Let's open this up in Excel, and you can see all that nice, simple, plain text that we had is now converted into some really, really, really ugly spreadsheet code. You don't really want to write a question, a set of questions in this format. All right, but now we've got them in the right format, we can import them into connect. So I'll go to connect and I'll grab one of my units and I'll go into assessments and down to quizzes. And you'll see I've been running a few quizzes. I've got a future quiz coming up and some past quizzes. Now I highly recommend that you don't put your questions straight into a quiz. What you do is you actually put them into a library of questions. And the nice thing about the question library is you can create different categories. So I've got different categories for the different topics that I teach in this course. And just for now, I've created an area at the bottom just so I can import the questions and you can see them. So let's click on that area and we'll go to import. This time, instead of choosing an existing question library, we can choose the text format which really is that CSV file that we've just created. We will browse. Now, because we downloaded it from my conversion tool, we will browse to our downloads area and grab my questions, which is an Excel CSV file. And I'll save them, and that will import them up into Connect. Excellent. So now you can see we've got a long answer question, a short answer question, true, false, multiple choice, multiple choice, multiple answers, uh, match the categories and put the things in the right order. 
So let's try a couple of these out. Let's have a look at state, cap uh, state capitals. Let's do a preview just to make sure that it's going to work. The three state capitals in Australia are fill in the right ones. And when the, we're grading it, we will see that Sydney, Brisbane and Melbourne are the right answers. Uh, now, which one do we have that we put some HTML code in? That was this one because it's got the word HTML in it. So let's have a look at that. And hopefully we'll see. Match the food. Notice that food is now bold because we put in the HTML markup code to make it into a bold word. The student will see a list of things and a list of answers. And if they get it right, they will fill them in in this order. All right, now, just before I go on, while you're doing Connect, you've got to watch out a couple of things that have been real big gotchas for me, especially with multiple choice, multiple select ones. You, when you put them in, you probably put the, the first answer is the right one, and generally all the other ones are the wrong ones. That's what I do anyway. If you leave Connect as it is, that's exactly what the student is going to see. And which means once they get the hang of it, they'll realize that the first answer is always the right answer. So we've got to fix that up. Uh, so for every multiple choice and every multiple choice, multiple select, you've got to edit. And you've got to wait and wait and wait for connect to show you the, an the question. And we scroll down and we turn on randomize so that the order of the options is randomized and it's not always the first one at the top is the right one. So unfortunately, and there is no way of doing this as part of the import, I wish there was. So for multiple choice and multiple select, you've got to edit, and you've got to wait a little bit, and once you've waited a bit, you can scroll down, tick on randomize, and save the question. I'm not going to go on more than that because that's the basic idea that you can convert a really simple text version of your questions into the ugly CSV file that is needed to import them up into um, Connect. If you go back over to my uh, quiz tool, if you want more help on how to do quizzes in Connect, the first link will take you there. And it tells you all about the basics of quizzes, how do you use them, everything you need, but my tool just does the quick conversion into the CSV file format. Okay, so that's about it. Um, if you want to use this, by all means, do it. If you have any problems, uh, get in contact with me and I'll try and help you out. But um, being able to write questions that are in this format is so much easier than using the, con uh, the Connect format. So I hope that you find this tool useful while you're writing your quiz questions in the future. Thank you very much.